Storm Tracker 9 weather with Chief Meteorologist Dylan Robichaud. Talk about a scare, a magnitude 5.7 earthquake off the Oregon coast. And this happened uh, actually about 7.23 p.m. last night. You can see that this was uh, located here about 117 miles uh, southwest of uh, Port Orford. Actually, I'm sorry, about 111 miles southwest of Port Orford uh, last night. And uh, according to our sister station, KGW, about 17 people felt the quake along the southwest Oregon coast. It did not cause a tsunami scare or anything like that. Uh, this happened along what we call the Blanco Fracture Zone. And so that's here in the green. Uh, this red platelet that you see right here, red is bad, right? Uh, that's uh, the Cascadia Subduction Zone. So that's really bad if you have an earthquake along that. But this was along, again, the Blanco Fracture Zone. And as we zoom in, earthquakes here that happen along the green do not cause tsunamis. And earthquakes, if they occur here along the Cascadia sub Subduction Zone, do pose a risk of causing a tsunami. And the reason, that, uh, the reason for that is because of the functionality here of the different plates. And so right here, this is what you call a subduction zone, where you have one plate actually subducting under another plate. That builds up stress, and over thousands of years, that can cause an eruption. Over here, though, these plates don't slide under one another. They slide past one another. And so it's what we call a strike-slip fault. They can still cause plenty of earthquakes, but typically do not pose a risk of causing a tsunami or a tidal wave, none of that kind of stuff. So that is good news there. Anyways, let's move on as we have more rain on the way as we head into your Thursday. You'll see when you wake up tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., it'll still be another blustery day as we'll talk more about the winds coming up here in a few minutes. Uh, Seven o'clock in the morning, still plenty of showers out there by lunchtime. You might even get a rumble of thunder tomorrow if we still have that instability. 4 p.m., it's hard to give you a good time on whether or not it's good to take a walk tomorrow because it's one of those days where the sun comes out for maybe two, three minutes and then you get drenched with another rain shower and then you kind of go back and forth throughout the day. By Thursday night, though, this thing begins to wrap up. And by 8 o'clock on Friday, the clouds linger. And look at that. By Friday afternoon, 12 p.m., the sun is out. And it should be really nice as we head into the weekend. The wind will still be a little bit breezy tomorrow. I mean, we're looking at gusts upwards of 30, 35 miles per hour along the coast. As we head towards the afternoon, we get some of those stronger winds inland. Willamette Pass, Santee Pass could be up to about 40 tomorrow. And that's because we have that area of low pressure sitting right offshore that will cause those strong winds. We are looking at some sunny weather on the way for the upcoming weekend. Uh, Saturday and Sunday should be pretty nice. Temperatures begin to warm up quite a bit. And then after four, five sunny days, look at that by uh, next week on Wednesday, uh, we have our next chance of rain returning once again. Look at Tuesday, though. We're back into the low 70s down there in the Umpqua Basin. And as we head into the start of April, 70 degree days are no longer not that uncommon. So we should get quite a few more of those days here uh, as we head into the next couple weeks and months. That was a look at the Cascades here at home, though. Easter Sunday is still shaping up to be pretty nice. The warmest days, however, will be on Monday and Tuesday as we get a little bit more sunshine. Temperatures are back into the middle and upper 60s. All right, Dylan, thank you. Well, still to come, we're looking at the warning signs for one of